Hey y'all, in for H and H here. Twelve forty a.m. in the east. I just worked a guy on fourteen two zero eight here. Uh, I don't know when this video will post, but it is uh, uh, May twenty fifth, two thousand twenty three. Twelve forty one now in the east. So I worked him at um, technically it was zero four thirty six um, Zulu time, and I, I was. I think the second to last person to get him. What I want to show you is now these guys are talking about him right now because he's gone. They think he was in France, but he wasn't. He was in New Caledonia, 8,179 miles from me. Um, I did, just in case you're wondering, I got him with the doublet antenna, the 160 meter doublet. I tried the others, vertical, ZS6BKW, but generally for DX, that uh, 160 meter doublet's going to win on 20 meters. What I want to show you is. Another example of somebody moved in, splattering. Not these guys. These guys came in after he left. Look at my DSP over here. Um, and the reason things sound real weird, I'll show you that in a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Now I got... Okay, yeah, that's them. They were at 210. So what I did was, I put the width, let me, let me zoom in, get you over here where you can see that one, alright, there we go. Now those of you who have a 5000, this will look familiar to you. If you're using an FTDX10, FT710, you have the same controls, but you know, they're in a different spot for you. So this is width, and I've got it, I dropped it down to 1.5 to knock that QRM out. Now, why did I do that? Because the QRM was two kilohertz away, and uh, you can go more narrow than that. If you if you reach over to the left of the VFO knob, there's an NAR button. If I do that, I'll just do it over here and let you see. I can go more narrow than that, but I will tell you anything. 1.1 is about as low as you can go and still understand what anybody's saying. So I just you know usually go straight to 1.5. I also enabled shift. And see, it was a high metallic sound, so I went to negative 120. That that gives me a little more low emphasis and knocks out that high frequency metallic sound, uh, which because I was on upper sideband mode and they were 2K up, it's going to be high high pitch metallic sound. If they had see, they're still there. If they had been below me, it would have been a low honking sound. It reverses on lower sideband. If you hear, if you're on a lower sideband and you hear a high pitch metallic sound, then the interference is coming from below the frequency you're on. If it's a low pitch honking sound, it's coming from above the frequency you're on. So, just try to remember it this way: USB high high pitched coming from up high, LSB high pitch coming from low, L low high pitch metallic sound, U for USB uppers above where you are all right so what i did was as you see i put the dsp narrow now this radio has a roofing filter and i've got it running at 3k over here um so that's the physical filters i call it the first line of defense all right digital noise reduction i had it on at eight pretty high for me i usually run around three or four but the reason i ran it up a higher is because i've still got power line noise plaguing me and then also I, I engage contour. So so again, digital noise reduction eight. I engage contour and I just swept it through there. You know, the sweet spot is around 2000 and you go plus or minus. And I heard him better at 2100 Hertz. So what I'm doing there, you see that little scoop symbol in there in the image? I'm scooping some of the audio frequencies out right below where his voice is most intelligible. Helps him leap up out of the noise floor. Then for icing on the cake, I enabled my um, micro or mu tune. You see the little micro symbol. If you don't have one hooked up, it'll revert to the one inside the radio called VRF, variable RF. But I do have an external mu tuner uh, in here. If you haven't seen those videos, look for them in the FTDX 5000 MP uh, playlist on my channel. It's the equivalent of VC tune for those of you who have an FTDX 101. D or MP. So I enabled that, and um, this is a reset. This just centers it back up because it tracks the VFO. 
but I actually left it centered up. Um, if I'm fighting noise it, or and if it had been worse, I would have gone down with it a little bit. As long as I could still hear the station I was wanting to hear, and then we'll center it back up. I actually left it at centered up. It'll go to whatever number is is appropriate for where I am on the uh, VFO, the big VFO over here, frequency. So that was the formula for pulling him out. I was running amp one because I needed the extra sensitivity. Um, you know, the bands are not in great shape. I had him at uh, five, five, six, five. I gave him five, seven because. I know this meter reads a little bit low, so I gave him the benefit of the doubt. But I wish you could have heard it. I, by the time I got the camera out, he was gone, and those other guys had come in there. But oh, you hear that? And by the way, I had been running the noise blanker, I should mention. I was running the noise blanker because of my power line noise, which hopefully will be corrected next week. Um... And so I had to, I, actually, that was, that will, remember, I've shot a video about this before. I've warned you about this. Uh, the noise blanker will degrade your selectivity, and I needed all the selectivity I could get, so I had to run without it. Because remember, what the noise blanker will do, yes, okay, it's a Band-Aid. See, remember, I told you, try to get the noise taken care of at the source. Because the noise blanker, while it may knock the noise down, it will allow uh, interference, even though it's not really interference necessarily, from outside of your pass band, okay? So in other words, I've got a three kilohertz roofing filter, I've got a, a 1.5 kilohertz digital filter engaged, but when you run the noise blanker, it kind of defeats those and it lets signal that is beyond all of that in. I mean, somebody could be six kilohertz away and they'd splatter. It's not them doing it, it's your noise blanker. So I had to do, do away with the noise blanker for that just so I could get uh, the selectivity I needed to block those inter that interfering station from two kilohertz away. So there you go, a little, little bit of a deep dive there on how I structured the rig to pull out New Caledonia. It's not my longest contact. My longest contact's 10,153 miles, I believe, to a station in Australia in 1982. Interestingly enough, I actually reached out to him about a month ago. His call sign has changed, but he actually responded to me on the email. And uh, I, I didn't have a QSL card when I worked him in 1982 because I'd only been licensed for about a month. So um, I owed him a QSL card. He had sent me one back in 1982. So I sent him a QSL card literally a couple weeks ago. Um, so uh, he still actually is still my longest distance contact. And that was in 19, July of 1982. And I, uh, right after I had been licensed in June. So uh, anyway, a little interesting thing there. But hey, uh, you know, 8,179 miles on sideband here tonight was uh, was not bad with that doublet antenna. Now, I'm not going to kid you, I did run the amp, and uh, he did give me a 5.9. So, uh, again, you can work the world with wire. I've never owned a tower, never owned a beam. Well, sorry, I did own a beam when I was a kid and had a CB radio beam. I was like 14, 15 years old, but I haven't had a beam since I've been an amateur radio operator, and that's been since 1982. You can literally work the world on wire when propagation is in your favor. So just as a point of reference, let me let you hear what they sound like two kilohertz away when I undo all the DSP. Sorry, let me move that over there. So here we go. No contour. See, even contour was helping because it's scooping out some of that high frequency interference or, uh, or really just high frequencies. And now turning off width, turning off shift, turning off the mu tuner. Now, would you want to hear that when you're trying to work a station in New Caledonia? So I just wanted to give you that point of reference there. Here we go. All right, uh, just wanted you to see that. Hopefully that, that gives you an idea of what's possible with these uh, radios these days. And I mean, most any radio has similar features. Yesu has the contour, I think Elecraft has the contour. Um, but as far as shift and width, those are your friend. Now, not every radio is going to have a, a variable pre-selectors, which is what, uh, the pre-selector, which is what this, uh, Mu tuner or VRF or VC tune in this case right here, it's a Mu tuner. Many radios aren't going to have that, but some of the higher end radios will have a variable pre-selector. Uh, ICOM calls theirs Digicel. 
uh, Yesus, like I said, the one in the 101 is called VC Tune. In the 5000 here, the built-in one is VRF. The external ones, which do an even better job, um, are called Mutune. Looks like a little micro symbol uh, from Mew. Yeah, those of you who've been around um, electronics a long time, you know, you will remember that term from tubes. Okay, from tubes. All right, just wanted to throw that little piece in there so you could see what it sounds like without the help. All right, well, let me leave you on a positive note. All right, <laughs> thanks, thanks for watching. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreon support team who bring you these videos. If you're watching a video now, it's because of what I call the long haulers. They've uh, joined through the Patreon program and supported this channel for a year and two and even more. Those long haulers are what, you know, funds the channel enough that I can keep these videos coming. I appreciate any, any level you can help, though. Uh, there are three levels of support. You can find one that's comfortable for you if you like this type of content and want to see it continue. Uh, you can vote. As they say, vote with your wallet to help uh, offset the cost of doing this. To uh, join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And if you would, give the video a thumbs up, a like. That helps us out with YouTube's search algorithm and costs you nothing. And you're actually helping the channel uh, by doing that. And also consider subscribing to the channel. That helps as well. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video, usually two a week, occasionally a third. And also, finally, if you would, please share the link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks again for watching, and 73 from N4HNH.